I mean, everybody's playing fast, 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 fast. They're sweeping, sweep, tap, sweep, tap. And, you know, I, I go from here to here and, you know. And, Learning and, modes. Yes. You know, and it's, it's good to know your theory, but at some point it's just like. Just like We're all doing the same thing now. Yeah. you just like you're cramming. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, that's where, you know, those guitar players, they, they talk down on someone like, you know, Kirk Hammett. But I think Kirk Hammett is a soulful guitar player. I can, I remember all his solos. You can sing them. The creeping death solo. Yes. Exactly. So melodic. They, they, yes, they're melodic. They catch your ear. You remember them. I mean, if you tell me to sing a Ingve Malmsteen solo, I'll be like, okay, <laughs> it's just a fast harmonic minor. <laughs> yeah. In the key of A, it's like okay, it's like it's technically perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, sorry, Ingve fans. You know, I, if I'm talking bad on your guitar player, I, I can't stand the guy. But you know, it's just he's just like okay. It's just I, I remember I went to go see one of the Generation X shows. And when he went on stage, I went outside his whole set. And this is back when I used to smoke. So, well, cigarettes anyway. And I went outside and I chain smoked. And I waited until I stopped hearing classical solos. And I was like, okay, he's done. And I went back in and then uh, Steve Vai went on. So, um, but I just, uh, yeah, the, when it's just fast, fast, fast. And I used to be that kind of guitar player where it's like to get attention, you have to play that way. And it did get attention at the time when I used to do the band days because... People would say, dude, you're so good. You're so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but it's um, looking back on it, I kind of like when I hear my old solos, I'm like, oh, God. I was like, you know, this a younger mind. I was trying to impress. And uh, in the recent years, however many they are, I, I get more into it. It's like, yeah, I still want to shred and show off, but I'm not going to be afraid to Kirk Hammett and do that creeping death thing where you're shredding and you slow down and you make a thing and you bend and you do some vibratos, yeah. you know, and do something slow. So that 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 will always be more memorable to me. Yeah, I, I think so. But also when you're becoming a shredder yeah. and you can't do it yet, it's like an impossible thing. When you see people like I remember when like Kirk Hammett or other anyone else does those fast runs starting at the 22nd fret and they go all like fade to black solo. He goes all the way down to like the 10th and 8th, 7th fret. And yes. like, then he rides it up to the low E and then it's like, how, like, how does he remember what? No and then eventually you get there and you're like, it's actually, after you do it a lot, it's actually not it's, that uh, hard. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 you just got to memorize, you know, some patterns and some shapes. But Kirk Hammett, evolved, you know, speaking of him, he's like not that technical. Like he doesn't no, do like no, 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 real, like sometimes he, he's not doing, I don't know. Certain guitar players, you see them using like very technical scales, and it's fast, but it's like once you can do it, it's not that hard. He, he was more technical, and even by his own admittance, during like the Justice time, um, where he was saying that he was trying to be that self-indulgent, egotistical lead guitar player because he saw he, he felt like he was in competition with the Joe Cetrianis, uh. you know. Um, and uh, but at some point, like you know, when you got to the Black album, then he was like, "No, I want to get more into grooving." Yes, grooving, improvs. And if doing a solo on the spot, and if it sticks, that's going on the album kind of thing. And, you know, in all the Black Album solos, you remember them. You can sing them. You know, yeah. you, can, you can reflect and you, you know what they sound like. And so, yeah, he's not, he's not all that technical all the time. Um, he has his moments there. But um, he's gotten more into the thing where he just grooves as, a, as, a, as an electric blues guitar player. You know, because those are his big influences from, you know, all the Zeppelin stuff and... and uh, uh, all the Jeff Beck and all that, you know, were his original blues fav favorites before he back cataloged, you know, uh, to the to the guys who influenced, you know, the English blues rock bands. But no, I you know I love Kirk Hammett. People can talk down on him all they want, but he he molded me, you know. So that's that's where I get my alternate picking skills from. So yeah, when, yeah. When I first started being able to play Kirk sol solos. I learned the easier ones first, I should say, because like you said, the Justice one, I, I think those are the hardest. Puppets, they're hard, but they're not like, uh, I don't know, there's something, they're weird on Injustice for All. He, like, he has weird timing on that, things. I think it's the timing that, that, that makes him a little bit harder. Like the Black and Solo has a, a couple weird little things in it that like, you can hit the right notes, but if you're a little off, it's not right. Yeah, I think it's because the time signatures are like, because I think like Black and is like something like 7-7 seven, seven and 7-8 seven, or something like that. And that's yeah, because he was well. He was even saying that it was challenging to write the solos over James's rhythms because he said they were so weird and off time, you know. So he goes, he said that was a, that, that's another thing that challenged him to be a more technical guitar player because he was playing over these weird rhythms. But but he's also like that on like the battery solo. Um, there's times where I have to go back and refresh and relearn it because there's a fast there's a, some of the fast patches in there. He has a really weird 
just time change where it's just a weird jump and and uh, the string skipping things and um, the uh, like especially well the tail the solo for some reason I struggle with that part dude that's string skipping right yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, if you can sweep it's a little easier because you can kind of sweep it and that that's a, that's a weak point for me I, I have a really hard time sweeping so I um, creeping death has a little sweep in it too. you know what and that is about as good as my sweep gets because the Kirk's sweep and that is it's pretty it's a little, basic little slow little sloppy yeah yeah, it's just it's basic and it's 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 nothing crazy and it's it's only three strings like, but anything beyond that it gets really hard for me and even just with those three strings, like I, I just I struggle with it. I don't know why, just the, the just the sinking of the hands, it just it's weird for me. So. What's what's the song? Is it Leper Messiah where it's like that one solo? Yes. That was the first thing I learned to sweep. I remember I came home on my lunch break from work and I was I would practice every day on my lunch break when I was like eighteen to twenty years old or whatever at the job I had, I'd come home, eat my lunch, and practice. And I remember that's the solo I was working on, and I wanted to sweep so bad. When I'm getting to the higher frets on some of that um, with the sweep, um, I'll start off fine. And I think where it's where I'm good, I think it's because I'm sweeping and then sliding up and then sliding up. That's where, I, you know, I feel like I'm losing my place on, the, uh, on some of the sweeping. So I just, I'm just not that, I, I, call, I, I mop, I don't sweep. Yeah. So. The, that solo for me now, when I try to play, it's it's too slow to sweep. Like, it's almost easier for me to, like, alternate pick it, kind of. You know what? I think recently, maybe even more than recently, he alternate picks it now. Yeah. He used to sweep it. Yeah, it feels weird. After you get, like, fast at sweeping, like, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's it's very strange. Now, now he makes separate picking motions when he, uh, yeah, I've seen him play a lot before, and, and I was like, okay, he changed it. And I was like, to me, that seems even harder now to, but if he, if he can do it. Because if I was if, if I wasn't looking, I, I couldn't tell the difference. So, do you want a refill? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna go grab a couple brewskis. Do you think you're gonna keep your hair and your beard long forever? As long as I can. Uh, you ever want to cut it? I don't want to cut it, but. Uh, or you get sick of it? You're like. Wow. I'm never I'm never sick of it. I've had it long, you know, pretty much all my life, most of my life, and it doesn't bug me. Um, you know, the thing with the long hair and the beard. It is out of laziness. Um, I because if I if I have to if I have to cut something or groom it, then I have to keep up on it, you know. And or else it gets way too itchy. Yeah, so it's just like, well, if I just let it grow, I don't have to worry about it, you know. So I, I'm not losing my hair, as far as I know. I'm not going bald. I, so I, as long as I, when it gets to that point, then I will shave it. Um, I'm not going to be that guy that has, you know, taken a few strands. That's not a good look. <laughs> I, I remember a couple years ago, you know, you when you go to Nam, they get you like they you have to park downtown, and then you take like a a, a bus across town. Yeah, yeah. To the convention center. Yeah, they have a shuttle. Yeah. And that is the saddest bus ride ever. It's the it's all these '80s rockers who are like going bald. They got but but that day of the the year is like their that's their their Halloween where they can dress back up in their leather throw on their spikes and it's like I'm looking at these guys like dude guys you're all fat you're, like you're, bald, <laughs> you're bald like. Give it up! Cut that hair. Exactly, dude. It is uh, sad. I will, I will, I will bick it down. Like the moment my my scalp is being seen, I will, I will, I will shave it off. I will not deal with it. I will just carry king. So <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuss with it. But in, for now, considering my age, uh, I'm enjoying my hair. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to part with it. I do the same thing out of laziness. Like every time my hair gets down to my shoulders, it's because I. Just haven't wanted. I just don't want to get a haircut. I don't want to sit down for two hours or whatever it is. And it's it's the cool thing though. To like, I mean, at one point this was like a bum look. You know, my mom and other people would say, if you don't cut your hair and trim your face, you're not going to get a job. But now everyone is doing this. You know, and it's like you know the the man bun thing. Guys, stop with the man bun, please. <laughs> I had one. I, I I used to tease you about that. I yeah, I know. No, I wasn't proud of it, and forever. <sighs> As my hair would grow out, I'd be like, I'll never, I'll never do a man. <laughs> and then my girl was like, you know, I, like, she's like, they're not that bad. So then one day she came over and I had it in a man bun. I was like, what do you think? And she's like, I didn't notice. I, it, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, I thought you'd be impressed out of everyone. But she's like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't care. But <sighs> I, yeah, after a while, it, I mean, you said you live where it's a little cooler than here. You're a couple hours away from here. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets hot, man. I can't deal with it. Like, my hair is very thick and coarse. Yeah, so yeah, you, you, yeah, I noticed that. When I it gets long, that. like, man, it is like, it is a swamp on the back of my neck. 
Uh, I just cut mine like a month ago, and the, it felt so good, dude. The, I mean, yeah. I know, I'm not trying to like convince. No, you long, long hair, long hair isn't for everyone, and that's just the price of long hair. Because I, I get people will ask, "Don't you get hot?" I'm like, maybe. I don't know. I, I guess so, but I, I'm not cutting my hair. I think you'd notice if it was so, that bad. It yeah, must not be that bad. For I'm not you. miserable, so. But I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, six thousand feet up where I live, so uh, the long hair is my friend, especially during the snowy season. Uh. So. <laughs> but we just, you know, we're, with it's generally anywhere from 15 to 30 degrees cooler where I live than, you know, here. Yeah, it's like 80 to 100 half the time here. Yeah, yeah. During yes. the summer, of course. I think our hottest, we'll get like a hot week where I live where it'll be like 90 or 95. That'll be hot to us. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I work down the mountain, so whenever I'm down here and we're in triple digits, I'm relieved to get up. You know, six thousand feet up, and to get into ninety. It's cooler up high, like I would think that you're closer to the sun. You know, yeah, it's like you know, and heat raises, so it's like think, why is it? Why I the would mountain? think it'd be like dry on like a mountainside, but I guess there's a, if there's more trees, that's that's gonna lower the temperature. There's, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, we we we, we our, our neighborhoods are uh, under treetops for sure. Um, you know, so it's, we basically live in a what what would I call a pile of matchsticks? You know, because we're just in forests. I mean, it's not like it's you know rural like we have a cabin in the woods thing. But I mean, we're, you know, we, we you know, this mountain area, yeah, it's a mountain resort, and but it's 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 cooler up there, and uh, this is uh, that the fresh air always feels like a, you know, air conditioning outside. So all we got to do is open up the windows to cool That's down. That's nice. So like even right now, it actually is feeling this, pretty good. This isn't that here. bad. I know. Yeah. You're right. This isn't that bad. Um, it's so funny because people, uh, the people that I've showed you to, they always ask me like, why is he is he huge? Is he, why is he called Un Uncle Sasquatch? And I never knew how big you were. What are you, 6'3", 6'2"? Six, 6'2 three? Six, two? Six, two and a half, barefooted. Okay, so look, that's, I'm super accurate with telling heights because I'm obsessed with heights. <laughs> I'm 5'8", I'm I was formerly 5'9", or, a, uh, you know, I used to be 5'9", but then I started being honest with people. <laughs> I was going to say, did you jump off a roof or something like that? And be like, <laughs> No, there's an old joke that's, uh, how come guys that are 5'9 seem so short, but girls that are 5'9 seem so tall? It's because they're both lying. I never thought of it that way. It's true. I no never thought of it no that way. No guys are five nine. That's true. They're 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 five seven, five eight. Uh, yeah, I have an ongoing joke that anybody who's under five ten is genetically in, uh, inferior. Um, <laughs> and but yeah. we, I was telling you earlier, we fit on airplanes better. That's true. Yeah. Though I have another odd, like joke where like it's like well like where it's like okay it's you know it's it's a courtesy thing if someone's shorter than me is saying can you get that up there for me but is it an insult if I say can you get that down there for me <laughs> you know but. I, I always have ongoing jokes about that kind of things on people's height. Um, I mean, it doesn't suck to be tall. You know, there's times where I, you know, certain areas, if I have to watch my head, sure. But, I mean, it's not like I'm a freak I, Yeah, tall. I was going to say, 6'3 is in even yeah. that, you know, you, you fit through doorways and yeah. stuff. Um, but your name came from, wasn't it like your nephew or niece? Or something? This has been part of a much longer conversation I had with Sasquatch a couple weeks back where we talked about all kinds of subjects, guitar related. In part four, we talk about where we got our nicknames, Uncle Sasquatch and Guitar Guts. And we talk a little more about rebuilding guitars and being YouTube and Instagram influencers. Click the links on the screen to watch part one and part two of this conversation. Be sure to be subscribed to this channel for more clips like this. And also go subscribe to Uncle Sasquatch's channel too. The link is right here on your screen right now. Have a good one, everybody. Rock on, my friends.